Direct News TV. March 29, 2024. On the front line of Russian attacks, Ukraine's Odessa cries out for U.S. aid. After leaving Odessa largely untouched by the barrages of drones and missiles it has launched against Ukraine this winter, Russia has struck the port city during March as never before in this war. On March 2, a Russian drone demolished a nine-story building, killing at least 12 people in one of the deadliest attacks behind the front lines this year. The delay in the supply of weapons for Ukraine, air defense systems for the protection of our people leads, unfortunately, to such losses, said Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, referring to U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson's refusal to table a bill including $60 billion in air defenses and ammunition for Ukraine this year. Just four days later, Russia landed a ballistic missile inside the commercial port less than 500 meters, 1,640 feet, from where Zelensky stood with visiting Greek Premier Kyriakos Mitsotakis. Then, on March 15, Russia launched a deadly cocktail of missiles and Iranian-designed shot drones. Ukrainian defenders managed to shoot down all 27 of the drones, but two Iskander short-range ballistic missiles landed on the Bolshoi Fontan, or Great Fountain, Promontory, a tall escarpment overlooking the Black Sea, surrounded by popular beaches and a promenade. I thought the end of the world had come. Paramedics Mikhail Ivankovic and Sergei Rotary were among the first to arrive on the scene. We arrived almost immediately after the first missile struck and saw two victims. We took one into our ambulance, and the other was to be picked up by a second ambulance, Ivankovic told Al Jazeera. Suddenly, we heard that another rocket was flying. We started to drive away and tried to pick up speed, but didn't have time. The ambulance was completely wrecked. Rotaru, 31, was killed, one of 21 fatalities that day, leaving behind a widow and two young sons. It's a miracle that I survived, said Ivan Kevik, who believed the time delay between two missiles striking the same spot was a deliberate ploy to kill first responders. A kilometer, 0.6 miles, away, pensioner Elena Ivanovna Roshkovan was out shopping with her neighbors Peter and Nadezda Soznora. Their houses were on the edge of Camp Victoria, a summer camp for elementary school children. Here, too, missiles fell. When the first explosion occurred, my neighbors and I were not far from our houses, Elena Ivanovna told Al Jazeera. We went to the store and were already on our way back. When the rocket exploded, I thought the end of the world had come. My legs went numb from fear. The Sosnoras ran towards their house. Where are you running? I shouted to them, Ivanovna said. There is a car in the yard, they said, we need to drive it away from the house. The Sosnoras didn't make it. A second blast wave overturned the car and it caught fire. In many nearby houses, windows were broken, roofs were torn off, and courtyard buildings destroyed. A week later, work was continuing to restore gas supply in this micro district. Fresh flowers near the road attest to the tragedies of March 15, as do holes in the fence where missile shrapnel tore through. No one is allowed into Camp Victoria. Throughout the city, 64 houses were damaged and four destroyed, causing consternation among Ukraine's allies. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk urged Mike Johnson, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, to look at Odessa. How many more arguments do you need to take a decision? Tusk wrote on X. Johnson is an ally of presidential hopeful Donald Trump, who says he wants to end the war quickly. Russia's war against Ukraine knows no bounds, declared Moldovan Prime Minister Maya Sandu, adding that her heart is with Odessa. Ukraine needs urgent help to protect itself and protect peace in Europe. My heart is with Odessa. Why is Russia targeting Odessa? The attacks have since become more frequent. Russia launched a massive nationwide attack on March 22, using 151 drones and missiles targeting 136 energy facilities, said Ukraine's general staff, some of them in Odessa. Dozens of missiles hit their mark, 
in the largest attack against Ukrainian energy infrastructure since February 2022. Odessa remained without power for at least part of the day a week later. More missiles and drones were downed over Odessa on Sunday and Monday. One missile struck the Odessa sanatorium on Monday, causing only material damage. Some of the rationale for targeting the port city could be pure opportunism. Odessa is exposed to a wide expanse of open sea, on the other side of which lies the Russian-occupied Crimean Peninsula, from which many of the missiles and drones are launched. Drones offer a few minutes warning to get to a shelter, but after sirens sound, missiles strike within a minute, Spyros Baburas, a member of Odessa's large Greek community, told Al Jazeera. Whenever Ukraine had a successful strike in Crimea, the following week in Odessa was sheer hell. The location of air defense in the Odessa region is built in such a way that it is not always possible to intercept both drones and missiles on the approaches to the city itself, Ukrainian Air Force spokesperson Yuri Ignat recently said at a news conference. Some reasons are psychological. Ukraine has humiliated Russia's Black Sea Fleet, sinking or crippling as much as half of it despite having no navy of its own, using aerial and surface drones. The latest Ukrainian attack against the fleet's base at Sevastopol on Friday damaged two landing ships and a repair dock. The Ukrainians have just about equalized the balance of power at sea, Athens University geopolitics professor Yanis Kotoulas told Al Jazeera. The Russians haven't managed to win back their lost prestige. When sirens now sound, people immediately seek shelter. The defeat of the Black Sea Fleet has enormous economic importance, too. Ukraine has been able to maintain exports of its agricultural goods by sea, chiefly from Odessa, despite Russia's threats last July that it would sink merchant ships hailing from Ukrainian ports. Ukraine's agriculture ministry said its overall exports last year were 7% higher in value compared with 2022, reaching $23 billion, and its grain exports increased from 37 million tons to 43 million tons. Those exports are of even greater value this year, with USAID frozen. In its third review of an extended fund facility this month, the International Monetary Fund found Ukraine's economy continued to show remarkable resilience in 2023, and its authorities continue to perform strongly, under challenging conditions, as it released $880 million for budget support. Odessa is a basic target because it is a node for grain exports, either towards the Danube or via the Black Sea ships, said Kotoulas. Russia wanted to create insecurity and concern in Ukraine's rear, despite the fact that a Russian assault on the city is now out of the question. I think they do it for their own internal propaganda, said Baburas. People here have stopped trying to explain Russian actions rationally. We all understand that anyone at any time anywhere can be a target. The intense focus on Odessa is changing people's behavior, but has not blunted their resolve, he said. There is greater fear, for sure, he said. For example, when sirens now sound people immediately seek shelter, whereas before these strikes, people didn't really believe the city center would be hit. But the freezing of U.S. aid by House Republicans has Odessa's worried. This whole act of resistance began in 2014 because Ukraine made the choice to be in the West, said Baburas. Does the U.S. have an obligation to help Ukraine? I say, when a country wants to turn the page and receives assurances and promises and then stops receiving assistance, that really is not correct. And that is a widespread feeling. My name is Kingsley. Please like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be the first to be notified whenever we post you won't regret it.